All right, so in the previous video, we went through kind of where all the gas laws come from, and I just want to give you kind of some real-life examples and work through a couple problems. Um, so whenever we breathe, that's probably one of the best examples of Boyle's Law. So every time you take a breath, whenever you inhale, your rib cage expands and your diaphragm lowers, and what that does is it increases the volume of your lungs, right? It expands that whole area. Whenever that expands, that causes the pressure to go down. Because remember, Boyle's Law is the one where PV is equal to PV. So P1, V1 equals P2, V2. And we said this is one whenever they're on opposite sides. They're inversely proportional. So the volume of the lung goes up, the pressure goes down. Well, your body doesn't like to have that decreased pressure of your lungs. So what happens as a result? Air is drawn into the lungs to equalize the pressure. So that happens every time you inhale. Now, whenever you exhale, the exact opposite happens. Your rib cage contracts and your diaphragm moves up. This causes to decrease the volume of your lungs. So now that your lungs don't have as much volume, what happens is, well, the pressure in there increases. We don't like to have these pressurized lungs. So what happens? Well, air gets breathed out. So that equalizes the pressure. So again, pressure and volume inversely proportional, and that's what Boyle's Law talks about. Um, Charles's Law talks about, um, if you picture a balloon, right? So here we're looking at uh, temperature versus volume, right? This is one of the examples we looked at uh, on the previous one. So it's V over T equals V over T. So V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. And again, we can get to all of these from PV equals NRT, right? So again, they're on opposite sides of the equation, right? V is on the left, T is on the right of the equal sign, so that means they're going to divide them. V over T equals V over T. So here we have our normal balloon. If we heat it, so temperature goes up, Guess what happens to the volume? Well, the volume goes up, right? The idea here is we're keeping the pressure of the balloon the same. Pressure stays the same. The volume is going to go up. Now, you take that same balloon and you cool it, right? What happens? Well, you decrease the temperature. You decrease the volume. They're going to be directly proportional. The so volume goes up. Temperature goes up. Volume goes down, temperature goes down. Or temperature goes up, volume goes up. They're directly related to each other. So that's Charles's law. Uh, Gay-Lussac's law is kind of the science behind like a pressure cooker or like an instant pot. Um, the idea here is you keep the, uh, the volume constant, right? These pots don't expand, so you lock them in. So this is going to be the... Uh, PV equals NRT is our uh, general equation. So in this case, the amount of gas stays the same. That's constant. The gas constant is always constant. And in this case, our volume is also constant. So in this case, the things that are going to change are pressure and temperature. So what we have here is going to be P divided by T is equal to P divided by T. So P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. Okay, so what happens when you increase the pressure? Well, if you increase the pressure, right? So if you increase the pressure, again, because they're on opposite sides of the equal sign, you increase the pressure, you're going to increase the temperature. So this is why we can cook things faster when at higher, um, at higher pressure. So this is exactly what happens with your pressure cooker. Pressure goes up, temperature goes up. You can cook a lot faster. Avogadro's law is most frequently used to compare um, gases to each other. So typically gases are compared to what we refer to as standard conditions of temperature and pressure. And these standard conditions are going to be one atmosphere, or 760 millimeters of mercury, and zero degrees Celsius, which is 273 Kelvin. So what you need to know from Avogadro's law is that at these conditions of standard temperature and pressure, one mole of any gas, it doesn't matter what that gas is, is going to have a volume of 22.4 liters. 
So that's going to be called what we refer to as a standard molar volume. And you can think of that as a conversion factor, right? 22.4 liters per mole. All right, so that's going to be something that you can use. And again, this is only true at conditions of standard temperature and pressure. So whenever you have one atmosphere and 273 Kelvin. Um, but in those conditions, 22.4 liters per every mole. So what does this mean? So, okay, so let's compare nitrogen gas. So nitrogen gas is N2. Nitrogen is what we refer to as diatomic. It has two atoms combined. So N2. Helium is just regular old helium. So one mole of both of these gases, you put them in a balloon. What's going to happen? Well, in both cases, since it's one mole, if we're looking at standard temperature and pressure, so let's say at standard temperature and pressure, which is abbreviated as STP, um, you're going to have 22.4 liters of gas. So both of these balloons are going to have the same volume, right? Because they both have one mole at the same conditions. That means in both cases, they're going to have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. So in this case, it's going to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd N2s. Over here, it's going to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd heliums. All right. Now, N2 is going to weigh, each nitrogen weighs 14.0. Since it's N2, each N2 is going to weigh 28 grams. So one mole is going to weigh 28 grams, right? Because you can, based on the molar mass, the mass of one mole of N2 is going to be 28 grams per mole, and we know we have exactly one mole here. Whereas for helium, the weight of one mole of helium is going to be 4 grams. So both of these balloons have the same number of particles. They're going to have the same volume. They're both going to have one mole of gas. Nitrogen gas is going to be seven times heavier than the helium. And that has everything to do with the property um, properties of these different gases. All right, so this is Avogadro's law. Again, remember that magic number is 22.4 liters per mole.